Uh, we're very glad to have you joining us here for the Tracker Planning and Implementation Management Academy. This is a level two academy and we'll go through a little bit of what that means. Uh, but first wanted to just give an opportunity to introduce a few of the, the people that will be facilitating and you'll be hearing from over the course of the next couple of weeks. Uh, we have quite an experienced team uh, that have been working with Tracker for some time. You'll hear a lot from different countries and their examples this week. And next week, we'll, uh, we also have a number of people training on different topics. Um, so maybe I will start uh, with uh, Carolina. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Hello and welcome, everyone. We're very excited to have you all at this academy. So uh, I'm Caroline Lien. I currently have two roles as a DHS2 project support team lead and a tracker functional analyst. So I'll be mostly uh, watching the Slack, uh, helping out where I can. So remember to always reach out there if there's anything and yeah, looking, for a great, looking forward to a great academy. Great, thank you. Uh, Anna, could you go next? Hi, my name is uh, Anna Torsheng. Uh, I will host a couple of sessions here uh, in the academy regarding planning, budgeting, and also a bit of this readiness assessment that you have uh, received uh, earlier, both on the Slack and uh, via email, I think. Um, day to day, I work uh, on several of our larger contracts. I work specifically with immunization and COVID at the moment that also has a tracker component. So. Looking forward to the Academy very much. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Anna. Uh, Kim, could you please uh, present yourself? Yes, sorry, I'm having trouble with my camera, but I'm Kimberly Frost. I am working at the University of Oslo uh, as a clinical specialist, uh, looking at how to use tracker with a clinical perspective, uh, working a lot on the immunization tracker projects and COVID. Uh, glad to be here. Great, thank you. Um, there's there's quite a few other people uh, that you'll be meeting in the, the next couple of weeks, but maybe that's enough to, to get us started and seeing some of the, the people that will be facilitating. For, for this academy, we had uh, people signing up from over 60 different countries. So just to recognize that there's quite a lot of uh, diverse use cases and uh, diverse experiences with Tracker. So we'll, we'll spend a bit of time today going into some of the various ways that people are using Tracker and make sure that we all have kind of a shared understanding before we dive into some of the more kind of in-depth topics. Uh, but just to give you a sense of uh, what we'll be talking about throughout the course, we have a, a short slide deck here. The first thing I wanted to say is that this is actually only the second time that we are giving this academy. Um, a little over a year ago, a year and a half ago, we had created the tracker implementation guide and then had the first uh, implementation academy in Ghana in March of 2020. Uh, this happened to be right as the COVID epidemic was breaking worldwide. And we ended up being able to do only the first four or five days of this academy and then had to uh, shut the academy down due to the COVID outbreak. So this is for us the first time now where we're repeating this academy. We've updated the materials with all of the things that we've been learning over the last year since that first academy, especially with regards to the COVID implementations and the different challenges as people are using Tracker for very large scale uh, vaccine support, uh, vaccine certification, uh, COVID testing, cohort monitoring, many different ways that people have been using Tracker. And so we want to make sure to bring in those considerations that we've learned since that time. Uh, so this is, this is an update to the, the only time we've ever given in this academy. To give you a sense of what we're doing here, again, this is not really a, a strong uh, technical or software focused academy. So we very much want the people that are uh, making decisions about implementation, about how to proceed in their country, whether they already have a tracker implementation or they're planning to do one soon. So we're, we're trying to give an overview of what ways tracker could be used, but also how to think about training and what might be different about IT support and how you would consider you know, approaching the different health programs and what kinds of roles there should be expanded to your team, either an existing DHS2 team or adding uh, DHS2 expertise. 
Um, we want to give some support around how to plan uh, finances and how to think about the resources that would be associated with your tracker implementation. So again, we're not focused so much on configuration. This is not something where we're going to sign in to DHS2 very often. It's going to be much more about uh, implementation and how to approach planning and how to manage your teams and how to uh, determine readiness and these uh, number of topics. So what we'd like you to be able to leave these two weeks with is the increased ability to plan your tracker implementation. Again, for some of you, that means that you already have an ongoing tracker implementation, and this will give you some additional skills and ways to approach managing that implementation. For some of you, you are going to be implementing your first uh, tracker implementation. Perhaps you already have DHS2 experience or experience with other software this way, but this will help you kind of hone in on the specifics around uh, DHS2 and tracker about what you would need to be considering. We also hope that this is going to lead to an increase in the quality of the tracker implementations. Again, this is something that there has been a lot that we have learned over this last year and, and over the last five, six years of tracker implementations. Uh, tracker in our estimation is uh, something that is widely used and is quite mature at this point, but there are also many countries that are doing these kinds of projects for the first time where they're really reaching down to the facility level with a, with a reporting system or whether actually trying to do clinical data capture or at the community health level. Um, so what this has been, I think, a learning and growth experience for, for many of us globally over the last uh, five, six years. And we'd like to really help improve the quality of implementation and ensure that you're getting the most out of these projects, which take a lot of effort, take a lot of resources and demand a lot of the people using them. So we want to make sure that they're of the highest quality implementation. We also will spend a bit of time making sure that you're aware of all the possibilities of how to use Tracker. Um, Tracker can be anything from a very simple kind of secondary reporting system where you're simply entering data to a full, you know, clinically based uh, tool that is providing decision support and, and uh, helping clinical health workers plan their day. So there's, there's a wide range of possible complexity, various features that can be used. There are many kind of interesting innovations that various countries and various HIS groups have done to improve on Tracker or to use Tracker in innovative ways. And again, we'd like to spread that knowledge and make uh, all of you aware of what you could be doing with Tracker and see some of the things that might be worth adopting on your end. Uh, we are going to have some specific uh, exercises and activities throughout these two weeks. We have one tool in particular, which we will share a bit more about uh, tomorrow and which we're, we've got a link to, that is to help you do first a readiness assessment for your activity. And again, this may be for an ongoing activity, but it's still very useful to sit down and think through kind of the landscape around your tracker implementation. Um, help you to identify some of the systemic kind of challenges and processes related to Tracker, things that you may want to have mitigation strategies for, understanding what the risks are, knowing how to balance those out with the, the right uh, kind of interventions to, to uh, take care or mitigate the risks, and try to help you have a better uh, possibility of having a long-term and sustainable implementation around the Tracker implementation. So we will spend time, particularly today, looking at a number of the different use cases, uh, ways that countries are using Tracker, um, both in kind of an ecosystem setting and standalone. Uh, we're trying to spend time making sure that you know, again, how others use it, how they, they take that data and analyze it, how the data coming in from an individual level system differs from perhaps what you've been receiving under aggregate, what kinds of decisions you might be able to make uh, using that data. Uh, also helping to think through capacity building and long-term training and internal capacity. So this is both amongst your, uh, your actual users of the system and also within your IT support structure. Uh, we know there's always with these especially large national scale systems, there's quite a lot of turnover and trying to think through how you maintain capacity over time and using the software and supporting the software. Um, there's also long term maintenance considerations. So often there's a heavy focus at the beginning when introducing Tracker 
and a lot of resources dedicated to rolling out the, the system. But then if you want the system to last and to be around for a long time, there are specific strategies that you can employ to keep your tracker up to date, to make sure that it's running well, to keep people using it long term, ways that you can uh, make sure to adapt it over time based on your needs. Uh, one of the key modalities for using Tracker is through Android. So we have specific session uh, around Android and what are the different considerations when you're using mobile devices uh, for Tracker versus using Tracker through the web browser. Um, again, focusing much more on the implementation of Android than we are on the technology but thinking through again, things like how to manage resupply of devices and what kinds of performance considerations do you need to be prepared for? Thinking through how you're going to manage people's logons and how to re you know, replace devices over time. So many of the key implementation considerations. Uh, we'll, we'll provide some guidance as well around uh, outlining the requirements for your tracker implementation. Um, there are a number of kind of starting points for Tracker. We'll go into some of that again today around, for example, the, the existing metadata packages from the WHO. But uh, there always is the need for a specific localization or adaptation of Tracker. And so we'd, we'd like to give you some frameworks for how to best uh, go about identifying what your requirements are and getting those into your system. What are the kind of skills that you need, the kind of teams that you need, the activities that you would do? Um, Within Tracker, and especially for all data that you might collect that could be considered sensitive data, personally identifiable data, there are a lot of security considerations. And again, thinking about this from the implementation perspective, who is the security team that would be responsible? What kind of activities must they take? What are the you know, legislative or, or uh, regulatory things that you should be looking into for your country to make sure that the way that you are using Tracker is satisfying the, the requirements for your area? Um, thinking through what that means to be hosting personally identifiable information in a ministry environment, for example, and how to relate that to perhaps your other IT systems. So quite a lot to consider there, and we will have several sessions devoted to thinking through those considerations. Um, and then also having a framework for assessing your system. Again, over time, thinking through how you do kind of routine monitoring of your, your tracker system. How do you ensure that you know, the training levels have been maintained, that the system is running long-term, that it's providing the kinds of data that you want? At what point might you make decisions about adapting your system or updating the system? So trying to help you uh, understand what the possibilities are there and to plan for those. So given these kinds of objectives um, and the, the learning outcomes that we hope so for, this academy has been uh, designed specifically to be looking towards uh, project leads, uh, development partners, those that are making decisions about where to allocate resources and what resources are needed to do a tracker implementation. The managers at the HMIS side who need to understand what it means to bring in an individual level data collection into perhaps their HMIS or aggregate architecture. IT managers who are responsible for managing and sustaining the, the systems over time, uh, helping them understand their staffing requirements, uh, what kind of team structure they might need, how they're going to handle IT support going forward, what kinds of kind of key challenges they should be aware of and be ready to have a response to. And of course, technical DHS2 leads, those of you that are already responsible for DHS2 in your country, whether you're using Tracker already or you're about to begin to, uh, understanding what are you, the available resources put out by the university, what are the you know, differences between the standard aggregate approach and the Tracker approach when it comes to implementation. So these are the, the audience that this is specifically tailored for. If what you were doing is hoping to come and get uh, insight into specific program rules or how to calculate a key indicator, that probably isn't what we're going to be covering very much of. You're going to get a lot more around planning, around uh, resources, around uh, risk mitigation, these kinds of activities. So we do have other tracker academies that would be more targeted for configuration and for you know, more complex uh, uh, setups around tracker. So you can see that we've divided up the level one tracker academy into two different new courses. 
the tracker use course covering data entry and data analysis, and the tracker configuration course covering configuration of tracker programs. These have, uh, the content has been developed and is, is in refinement at this point. We're planning to begin those courses in September of 2021. Given the current travel restrictions, we assume those will also be online courses and there will be announcements about those that you can share with the right people in your organizations who should have a better understanding of how to configure or what to do with data entry and data analysis. Um, you can also consider always doing specific in-country tracker configuration trainings. Uh, there are a number of groups offering support for training of your teams in country. Uh, we have our HISP network team, many of which you will hear from throughout these uh, two weeks that are regionally based and that would be available to provide specific in-country trainings around tracker configuration. So again, you, you would uh, probably uh, have to consider as the person planning or managing for your tracker implementation that you do want to bring in some support in building up capacity in your internal team. So there's a lot more that I think we'll cover throughout uh, the academy on these uh, topics and give you a sense of where to obtain the resources. But we did want to make sure that we were all kind of on the same page about what is the content of this academy and what we'll be covering in the next two weeks. Hopefully all of you that are signed in and that are here are excited about this uh, topic. Uh, we have uh, quite a lot to share in many different sessions. There's never really enough time to finish everything, but we hope to put you on the right path towards being able to have the resources and the knowledge that you need for proper tracker implementation. Um, we also, again, will have a, a specific learning tool that you will be using on your end, which we'll introduce a bit more tomorrow. But this tool is a series of spreadsheets that you will be able to fill out on various topics based around your specific implementation. And so our hope is that by the end of these two weeks, you actually will have a fairly detailed tracker implementation plan as the output of uh, what we've been learning throughout these weeks. And we'll give time in the academy to discuss your specifics, uh, your plan, and be able to share some of the, the things that your country is, is uh, going to be going through with tracker. So that I think is my brief introduction of what this uh, Tracker Academy is. Uh, we're gonna spend a few more minutes now with some of the administrative teams supporting this academy so that they can give you an idea of what the tools are and how we'll be using those tools. So I think at this point, I will turn it over to Martin to walk us through some of those. Thank you, Mike. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Right, so I will just go quickly through uh, our Slack for everyone to see, uh, because not everyone are familiar with, with this uh, communication tool we are going to use for this academy. So let me just share my screen. So uh, what you're seeing right now is our Slack announcement channel. Uh, this is where the facilitators will be communicating directly to everyone, posting announcements. You will not be able to post it directly yourself, but you can react to any comment. For instance, let's, I'm going to react now to Mike's comment by giving him a little, uh, a little wave. Uh, you could also write a comment, reply in thread, if you have a question that's directly related to that announcement, like, like I'm doing right now. So uh, the other, other channel you should be already uh, have access to is the introduce yourself channel. I'm just gonna select this right now. Here, I would like everyone to introduce yourself here for the benefit of us and also for everyone else attending. Uh, here you can write your message, tell a little bit about yourself and uh, why, why you're in tracker implementation. Uh, we also have, there we go. Thank you, Sabun, very nice, very nice. Uh, we have a showcases channel where you can uh, show off some of your tracker implementation or programs from where you live. And of course, we have a questions channel where you can write any kind of question regarding this academy. Uh, last is the project planning uh, template channel. This is where we're going to be uh, posting about uh, the exercises for this academy. Um, Right, that is pretty much sums up our channels. Uh, you could also 
Uh, if you're not, if you can't find the channel, it's possible to find them here. Go to the channel browser, and you can see all the channels that are available uh, and join them. This is only if you're not already in that channel. Of course, you will not be able to join the instructor's channel for obvious reasons. Very well. Um, any questions regarding the Slack? Feel free to pop them. Uh, just post them directly in chat, and I'll be able to answer them. Or if anything was unclear. Otherwise, that's that uh, sums up the uh, yeah Slack introduction. Any questions? No? Good, good. Um, I'll stop sharing now. Oh wait, is there something? I'll stop sharing and uh, let's get over to uh, Gassim, who will be showing off our new badges for the uh, Academy. Okay, so I'm going to be introducing today the uh, Academy badge sets that are new for all the participants in DHI's 2 Academy. Uh, let's first talk about uh, what the community practice is. The community practice is, uh, is a place for you uh, to, to join with a, uh, with a, with a global, uh, in a global space for you to, sh to interact with the shi experts, with um, his groups, people who have implemented uh, the shi from, from from the beginning to, the, to almost the end and are still going and improving the, the, uh, their dhi uh, implementations. And it's a place for you to share experiences, to uh, be part of the solution, be part of the solution in your country and, and uh, this global good project. So the DHI2 um, project success is based on the community of the people who DHI2 community practice uh, is something that all uh, DHI2 Academy participants should be engaged engaging in. If you face um, difficulty while you're working on DHI2, you can always go to the community practice and share um, and ask questions. Uh, what are the, these um, badges, the new set of badges in the community practice? Uh, for the, for the super ba active badge is granted to the uh, DHI2 Academy participant when they're, you know, the kind of examples of when you could be uh, posting questions in the questions channel and so on. Uh, of course, asking good questions shows that you're super active. And anything that shows that you're paying attention and really part of the activities and the, uh, um, the training or workshop and the DHI2 um, Academy event. And then there's the super helpful badge. The super helpful badge is granted for anyone who is helpful in the DHI2 Academy. So um, I, I won't give you examples, but I'm just going to ask you, uh, how can you be helpful for other for others in the DHI2 Academy Academy? And then there's the completion badges. A, uh, there's the completion badges. So when you complete a badge, a, when you complete a uh, course in DHI2 Academy, uh, and you get a certificate for that, you also get a badge along with it in the community practice. There's the level one. Uh, the level one badge. So when you complete a, when you get a certificate for level one DHS2 Academy course, you also get this badge. And there is the uh, level two completion, uh, level, uh, level two completion badge, which you get when uh, uh, when you'll finish this course. So please uh, make sure that you are joined, at the, uh, that you have an account in the community practice, so that you get this badge. And then there is the Academy participant badge. This badge is granted whenever you participate in a DHI2 Academy event, uh, such as webinars, um, workshops. So these are the set of badges, and I would like to just uh, show you the community practice uh, page. This is the community DHI2 community practice page. Uh, uh, you just go to community.dhi2.org, and we'll send you the uh, invitation link in the Slack group. When you join, uh, please make sure to go to Connect and uh, look at the uh, uh, Introduce Yourself, uh, the, the different uh, communities here. And uh, there's the Introduce Yourself topic. So um, 
try to check it out, check out the categories or support the different topics. Uh, and if you're still in the community practice, if you already have a user account, then that's great because you're gonna be receiving your badge. Uh, let me show you the badges in this course. So these badges are in this course in the community practice. Uh, when you're engaging, sharing posts, uh, liking posts, you get all these kind of badges. And over here, we have the DHI Studio Academy uh, badges, super active, super helpful. DHI Studio Academy participant, DHI Studio Academy level one completion, DHI Studio Academy level two completion. So uh, when you go to, when you have, you have you have a profile, right, in the DHI Academy, where you have your picture, your name, and what you do in the, um, uh, you kind of describe, you have a profile, like Facebook and LinkedIn, but over here, it's uh, it's for the community you're gonna be interacting with, so it kind of be, should be related to DHI too. Uh, this is the uh, uh, profile for our user experience designer, uh, DHI too, Joe Cooper, and uh, he received the badge, uh, super helpful because these badges were designed by him. So um, yeah, as I said, make sure you, you have an account in the DHIS, uh, in the DHIS2 community and uh, click on the link, join, so that um, when you're while you're interacting in this uh, academy, you have the super active, super helpful, be helpful, be super active, and. Uh, and when you complete the level uh, two uh, discourse and you get the certificate, you're also gonna get badge in the community practice. Welcome, and if you have any questions, you can always go to community practice, ask your questions, as well as in the Slack group uh, for, and for this course. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh, there's the link, um, Alice shared it with you, so sorry. Okay, so the community practice is the online uh, global space for you to join. And, uh, sh and and connect connect with the DHIS2 experts with the HES groups uh, around the world who have implemented the DHIS2 um, uh, instances from beginning to almost end, and are still you know doing uh, implementations and improving. It's part of you to be part of the success of the DHIS2 project because the DHIS2 is really all about the community that DHIS2 are the people who are working on around the world who are um, supporting each other and are sharing experiences. So the community practice is an online uh, web-based uh, platform where you can join and uh, create a profile, uh, uh, introduce yourself, as well as get to know others, um, listen from, um, hear about their experiences, share your experiences, as well as ask questions for support. Um, it's fairly easy to go. Uh, you can click on the link um, that Alice sent you in the, uh, in the uh, Zoom chat and join. Uh, you can always go to the community practice and ask questions. And uh, the, the other point uh, maybe uh, you missed is that um, uh, DHIS2 Academy participants are encouraged to be part of the community practice because that's the place where you will develop um, your educational and professional path by by sharing with other uh, other students and other uh, and experts and uh, people who are uh, part of the DHS2 um, implementations and developments. I hope uh, this is clear. Thank you so much, Yasim. Um, thank you, thank you for this Martin. nice. Thank you for this nice introduction. So basically, as Gassim said, um, one of the key points is that uh, we would like to encourage all of you who do not have yet an account on the community of practice to create your account there. Uh, you know, at the end of this academy, you will be uh, receiving certificates of participation. Along with these certificates of participation, you will also receive a badge of participation on your COP profile. So this is why we would like to give at least one minute to um, all of you who do not have yet an account on the COP to click on the link that I shared in the chat so that you can create your account. It's very quick, it takes like 15 seconds. So yeah, you have one minute to click on this link and um, create your account. Once you're done, you can just let us know with a thumbs up. Thank you so much. Let's wait a few seconds. 
And while some of you are doing this, just to highlight the fact that the two other badges um, that you can get um, while participating in this academy, meaning the super helpful badge and the super active badge will be allocated to those who are actively, are very active on the Academy Slack. So it's, it's also important to join the Academy Slack. Uh, I think some of you are not uh, on the Academy Slack yet. So I shared a link to join the Academy Slack. Now, Alice, I'm old. Why do I want a badge? Sorry? I'm old. Why do I want an electronic badge? What's the benefit of having a badge? The benefit of having a badge, a badge is basically to, um, it's a kind of reward because you have your certificate, but when you have your badge, the community can see that you are an active participant um, within the DHS2 community. So it's a kind of nice and fun way to also reward our community members and the most active ones. Like for instance, in some academies, we can see that we have some participants who are really eager to, to learn, asking questions and very actually very relevant and important questions or even sharing tips with other members of the community. So we thought that it would be a kind of good way to recognize this um, contribution as well. So this is why you would like to have a badge, Kim. <laughs> I'm excited to be part of the DHS2 community and show my support with active participation. Thank you, Kim. 